Brooklyn Independent Television. You see, my mother had told me, uh, I want to say it was a weekend just before uh, having to go back to school on the following Monday that my dad was sick. And she did it the way she tells me everything, which is poorly and with weird timing. And she just said, I have something to tell you. Which the last time she had said that, it ended with, I got a puppy. So I was like, oh, what, what do you have to tell me? And then she was like, your dad has AIDS. I'm like, oh. I'm Daisy Rosario. I'm a storyteller and comedian, uh, but mostly a storyteller. Um, born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm currently uh, hosting and producing two shows in Brooklyn. She runs a fantastic set of shows down at the Root Hill Cafe on 4th Avenue in Brooklyn. And she's coming here tonight to share something pretty close to her heart. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Daisy Rosario. I've been through a lot of really weird, random things. I lost a home to fire when I was um, 15, like just before Christmas, you know? And my mom had a kind of a handicap growing up and I had to be like the responsible kid who was really aware of that. Or, and my dad was a drug addict. And you know, there, you meet lots of people whose parents were alcoholics. It doesn't mean that they're like, oh, I have to tell everyone about this all the time. Some people never want to talk about it. Um, but I don't let it, kind of stop me in my life, but I do try to take it in and see what it makes me think of and try to recognize those patterns that maybe it brings out in my life and then put words to them. A lot of the time when I do tell stories about maybe dealing with my father or something, more often than not it is somebody who's maybe their dad was an alcoholic or, or a fellow addict or something who want to come up to you and you know, I, w I went through that and I'm not comfortable talking about it. But it's so easy to think that you're the only one that it's like it just really opens it up um, you know those 10 minutes after a show when people want to tell me that they've been through something for me that's like this amazing moment uh, this is the, uh, the fourth show of New York Confidential and every, every show here at, at uh, Confidential has a theme and the theme tonight is body on a couch stories about finding therapy and chilling out and all the storytellers here tonight are going to tell stories at least tangentially related to, to, to therapy. There I am in therapy with this woman who is looking at me as if what I've told her is the most in overwhelming information that she's ever gotten in her life. And I am already freaking out. I fell into the storytelling scene here in New York City and I have since, uh, since I guess 2008 uh, been hosting shows, one up in Queens and this is my new show here in Williamsburg uh, at The Cove. And uh, this one's called New York Confidential. When I first moved to New York, I had a job working as a, a newspaper hawker for The Onion, and I got to just meet all of these characters in the subways uh, that I, what I wanted to know, like, where do you come from? You know, why, you're a native New Yorker? Why, why, what are you doing here? And so, some of that experience is what inspired this show. Uh, I wanted to kind of go out and just meet these people, natives, and say, what was so, uh, you know, key to your experience of growing up in New York? Her first day that she had came into to uh, Cold Stone Creamery, which is where I had been working. Uh, she was uh, from California, brought in to show us all how we're supposed to serve ice cream the correct way. The only time I ever saw a, uh, a therapist was the months after my divorce. I am hoping that the others are taking note of my abstemiousness. I was 19, like, it's going to take a while for me to process that. Daisy and I met through the comedy scene in New York and the storytelling scene. Uh, we, uh, I don't know, I think we hit it off at uh, Told, another great storytelling show here in town. I've always been impressed by, when, at her shows by the way, how, how, how warmly she welcomes the audience, which is something that I don't necessarily do at this show just because of the, the genre, you know. Uh, conventions. I, I host this show in character as like a kind of noir detective guy. We're telling stories. Real stories. It was just what was happening to me at the time. Like I always knew my dad was not a great man. Like he was a drug dealer. And I knew that that's why mom bitch. So like him having a disease as terrible as it was, was not a shocking thing to me. It's not like he was out at like a nice normal job. He beat people up for a living. You know, like he got shot at for a living. Like. Getting some kind of disease seemed like it would be part of the list of things that could happen to you if you did those things. I work 
doing outreach at some schools too, like and go and teach students, um, coach them in their own storytelling, you know, and it's just amazing to watch a 16 year old realize that like you've been through the same thing when you were 16. It wasn't the exact same thing. You've been through like the same kind of heartache and up and down and just like actually see them, that make them stop for a minute and like have a little bit of perspective at a young age, you know? So, so yeah, for me, it's really like just kind of being able to stop and, and look at everything in, a, in an honest way. Because if you're just getting up and talking about all these things in your life, but you don't, you haven't taken in why they felt that way or how you reacted, you're, yeah, you're probably, you might be entertaining at a party with anecdotes, but you're probably not gonna be like a great storyteller. So to me, therapy was this thing that, you know, I don't know, it was like it was like a two week vacation. Like I heard about it on television, but it wasn't a real thing that existed for people like us. And so it was weird to to actually like have to face it full on and like live in this world where these people all thought it was like the best idea was therapy. But all it did for me was reinforce that like all I need is my iPod and you know, whoever is describing the right feeling or whatever movie is telling me what it's been like to be there because my circumstances are usually so ridiculous that the only thing that makes sense is the fiction that people make about them. Thank you. Download this program's podcast on iTunes, keywords Brooklyn Independent Television.